And I had no idea if it was actually going to work. I didn't know if I was gonna make it. Hey, my name is Ryan Kearns and I first found out I had Lyme disease about six or seven years ago when I started fainting unexpectedly. That's right, I fainted a few times. Um, one of the times I didn't really feel like I started to faint and I caught myself on a tree. It left a big scar on my arm and um, I was bleeding down my arm and that's when I had the final straw. I said, something is not right with my body and I need to figure this out. I didn't had no idea. I had no idea that it was Lyme disease. I didn't even suspect Lyme disease in the slightest. I thought it was gonna be something even more serious uh, it, because just the way that I felt was crazy. I mean, I was sleeping for 16 hours a day. I was fainting. One day I woke up and I just had a fever, chills. You just couldn't like get out of bed, was achy, was very sick, but I just figured it was some kind of flu or something. But the fainting, now that was something completely different. So I ended up going to the hospital. And at the hospital, they said, oh, like, did you anything, any weird rashes or anything? And I was like, actually, yeah, I have these couple of rashes on my belly. I don't know what they're from. I went to the beach, so I thought they were from, like, salt water uh, rashes, you know, that you'll get. I'm sure if you've been to the beach, you know what I'm talking about. And the doctor had one look at the rash and said, you have Lyme disease. Here's a prescription for antibiotics. Now, personally, I've always been someone that cares about health, that cares about feeling good, exercising, eating the right food. So I wasn't about to just go put some random drug into my body without looking into it a, a bit further and figuring out what's going on. You know, is this the best choice to take this drug? I believe that a lot of people should get a second opinion especially if they're telling you to take a drug or do a specific surgery, you should ask another doctor first to make sure that that's common practice, that that's the right thing to do, etc. But personally, I started just reading everything I could get my hands on before taking antibiotics. And what happened was my heart rate was down to 30 beats per minute. So it was a serious case of Lyme carditis. My family was scared, I was scared. I didn't know if I was gonna be able to meet my son. I thought I might actually die. You know, Lyme disease doesn't often kill anybody, but when it does, it's usually because it causes problems in the heart. Obviously our heart is very, very vitally important and we have to make sure that it's beating correctly for us to survive. But my heart rate was slowing down due to an AV block from Lyme disease. Now this is a terrible, problem and they monitored me they put me on all types of machines and they uh, strapped me to a heart monitor for 48 hours to make sure they can monitor my heart rate over time see what, what if it's changing if it's getting better if it's getting worse and i went through a battery of tests to see what was wrong and how i could possibly heal the body now this whole time, I'm reading everything I could get my hands on. Every study, every book, everything any doctor wrote about Lyme disease. And what I'm finding shocked me. I found out that there's something that we can do that's not taking antibiotics. And I also found out that antibiotics don't always work. And that some people take antibiotics and then nothing happens. And... The reason that that's not okay is because antibiotics actually kill bacteria in your body. We're made out of, you know, 900 trillion bacteria. We are basically back, mostly bacteria. We're 90% bacteria. So to kill bacteria is to kill a lot of good things that we need in our body, along with, hopefully, the bad things that we don't need. But the more I read about Lyme microbes, the more I understood that antibiotics just don't seem to be the best solution to the problem. So now I'm in this place where I'm like, do I take the antibiotics? Do I take the, do I not take the antibiotics? And do I try to use more natural methods like herbs? And personally, I knew what I had to do. I decided I wasn't going to take the antibiotics because of the reasons I just mentioned. If you look it up, antibiotics actually have uh, deaths tied to them from 
you know, they kill good bacteria, it leads to infection in the gut, people die. Um, it's a very, very small percentage of people and I don't wanna scare anybody from taking antibiotics, but the risk still exists and there's no risk at all with taking herbs. Now, granted, I am in a risky position already. I have a heart block. I have a, a serious case of Lyme carditis. So what can I do? Well, I'm just looking at this and thinking, I just don't think that antibiotics work for Lyme disease. Just based on what I know about Lyme microbes and how they behave. They're very low in number. They're very low virulence. They don't, you know, cause an insane infection that like, you know, it's not like, um, for example, pneumonia or Ebola, where it's like a very obvious infection. If you have pneumonia, you're coughing your brains out because you're extremely sick. If you have Ebola, you're, you're, you're falling apart, right? You, you, you're very noticeably sick. Lyme disease is very low grade and, and, and I don't want to say mild because a lot of the symptoms are not mild, but the symptoms don't actually usually come from the microbes themselves. They come from our, uh, our immune system reacting to those microbes. So here we are in this place where I'm thinking, I just don't think that the antibiotics are going to work for Lyme microbes based on what I know about Lyme microbes now after reading for the past whatever week at the time. So I decided I was gonna gamble a little bit and I didn't know if it was going to work and I didn't know what would happen and I didn't know if I would make it. It was very scary, but I decided I was going to not take the antibiotics. And I was going to take herbs instead. And what happened was, well, I slowly got better over time. Actually, I also changed my habits. I changed my diet. I changed my, my routine. I started doing stress reduction and meditation and breath work. I started doing all of the things that I could possibly do to take control of my health rather than just taking a pill and hoping the problem gets fixed. See, so many people just want that quick pill, that quick thing, right? And I could have easily fallen into that same trap. And that's why people take antibiotics. The doctor says, this will fix it. So we believe them. You know, they went to school for six years, whatever, eight years. We, they should know. They should know what fixes the problem, right? But unfortunately, Lyme disease is very unknown, very mysterious and very difficult to understand. They just don't teach that deeply about Lyme disease. And there's specific people that want that specific antibiotic to be taken. Uh, they have financial interests in that antibiotic. They also have financial interest in the testing procedures. There's a lot of strange uh, behind the scenes stuff going on when it comes to Lyme disease. So, the best way forward for me was to use herbs. Now, I can't say that that's the best way for everybody, but here's what happened to me. I was able to take back my body. They viewed my heart rate after about a week of herbs, nutrition, and all the things I just named. I focused on sleep, hydration, like literally every single thing, sauna. I did everything I could get my hands on. Everything that I understood to make me better, to make me healthy, to lead me back towards homeostasis, which is a state of balance where our body is in a state where all systems work together correctly. And so as I did that, they noticed my heart rate start to go back up to normal ranges. Then about two weeks later, I, they did a, a sonogram of my heart and my heart rate Look, my heart looked completely normal. There was no AV block and there was no, no problem anymore. My heart had been fixed, but I still had Lyme disease. I was still dealing with a microbial load. I was still dealing with fatigue and, and tiredness and achy joints and brain fog and depression and, you know, uh, emotional things. I can't even explain it. Just like getting angry or getting upset and then getting happy, like emotional swings, I should say, mood swings. Um, I was dealing with all of this still. So I continued to take the herbs. I continued to focus on my health. Over the next six months, I got better. And then over 12 months, I was back to 100%
myself. I took back my body. I felt like myself again. And I was there for my kids. I was there for my family again. Nobody was scared. Everybody was okay with the, the journey that I had to go through. Now today, as you can imagine, doing 12 months of healthy habits, the, the, the way that it changes your body, the way that it changes the way you feel day in and day out, it's very difficult to want to go back to anything else. So I didn't just go back to eating pizza and Chinese food and, you know, watching Netflix all day and doing the things that I did before I had Lyme disease. It actually changed me for the better. It changed my life. In a strange way, Lyme disease kind of saved me. And so I share this with you today in hopes that this can help you make a decision, that this can help you realize that you don't need to follow what the doctor says to do just because they're a doctor and they spent, what, five minutes with you, 10 minutes with you. They don't really understand what's going on. They know that in the book, it says, do this if this happens. If they say, if they have this, you do this. That's all they know, most of them. Now, if you're going to a Lyme disease specialist doctor, that's a completely different story. But a doctor that isn't trained in Lyme disease just doesn't understand the complexities of the disease. Personally, I was able to heal using herbs, specifically Stephen Booner's protocol from the book Healing Lyme. And since it worked so well, I also found data showing that most people are getting results from this exact same protocol. In fact, if you look here, you'll see 49% of people said it was the most effective protocol that they ever used. And this, is from a, this is from a Facebook group that I'm in where, you know, someone asked, what is the most effective herbal protocol that you've used? And this was the, this was the results. So I boxed up Booner's protocol. I, first of all, made thousands of calls, had to source the herbs, find the herbs, make sure I got the packaging, get everything figured out. That took me about two years. I finally got everything figured out where I could give more people access to these herbs at a reasonable price with an amazing value offer where I can give it to people so that they can start to heal without having all the bells and the whistles and the fluff and the BS. You know, so many supplement companies are just adding all types of stuff in there that don't need to be in there. They're fillers. They use it to increase the price and the value of the, of the herb and it's just unnecessary. You can just take the basic herbs, that's all I did, that's all the people that had results did, they take the basic herbs day in and day out. And instead of going to stores and searching high and low or going to Amazon and trying to find each different product and not knowing what the quality of the products is, we did all that work for you. We have the highest quality product, we have the best product that is out there for Lyme disease, and we put all of it just simply in a nice package sent directly to your door. And now you can get the very herbs that helped me fix my life. And it helps so many other people as well. You can get that at LymeDiseaseWars.com. Order your Lyme Wars herb box right now because they go super fast. The first time we, we opened this, it, they sold out within seven days because people love them so much. So we want to make sure that you get yours while they're still available. Remember that you're responsible for your health and nobody else. It's time to take responsibility. It's time to step up to the plate and it's time to do the difficult things that will get you to where you want to go. If this video helped you out, hit the like button below so that YouTube knows we're making good videos and it can show our videos to more people. We can help more people who have Lyme disease get better faster. While you're down there, you might as well hit subscribe because we're constantly uploading more and more videos about Lyme disease specifically, but about health and wellness and basically optimizing your health for them so that you can feel like a million bucks every day. Hope this video helps you out and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.